Welcome to Binary Jazz, the show that starts off with Gary saying got it and me actually doing the introduction. Uh, that's about the only consistent thing that we have uh, on the show. Uh, it's I'm here again, uh, as per usual, with uh, Binary Gary, who's Gary in real life, Allison Plus, who's Allison in real life, and me, myself, I am Jazz Sequence, or Chris in real life, and this is a podcast about things uh i don't know listen to some old episodes i guess in old episodes um <clears throat> we uh we made an effort to share the workload on the introduction and <laughs> that's that's gone away maybe one of these days i'll just bust in and do the introduction and shock everybody but i doubt it it, it would be it would be shocking and awesome <laughs> like, all of a sudden be... i have this like patter that I've been storing within me for the whole. <laughs> like you guys didn't know I used to be a radio DJ. Jeez. I I constantly whenever so so at my work we have these like we use Donut the Slack the Slack bot app thing which like pairs you with somebody else and Donut's gotten pretty good where like it'll actually look at your schedule like when donut first started it didn't actually look at your schedules so if you had like vastly different time zones like it would pair you with somebody in india or australia at time and it wouldn't and and now it'll try to pair you with with people who like are within your working hours generally or and it will give you automatically give you times that you can like just click on a button and it will add the event to the calendar um so so we do that and I, I i do them fairly uh regularly and whenever i do them everybody always compliments me on my microphone which you know since i do the blur effect on on my background you can't even see my microphone you uh, just thought you sounded like this naturally <laughs> yeah no it, it's it's like oh wow your audio sounds really good welcome, <laughs> welcome I, I made the effort jazz. for a little while with a microphone and then i find that i would prefer meetings standing up and pacing when i'm not on camera so wireless headphones, or um, if I'm on camera, seated in a comfy chair. I uh, don't take too many meeting, too many meetings. So that's a better strategy, <laughs> much better strategy. That's yeah, <laughs> that's my my strategy is to just go through the whole day without saying anything, and then emerge, and my voice is all scratchy because I haven't <laughs> talked at all. <laughs> I ran into one thing the other day where someone was like, "Can we meet on?" arbitrary day thursday and i'm like yeah i it's gonna be tricky for me because i've got a lot of meetings i've got like a 9 30 a.m and like a 2 p.m and they were like <laughs> what <laughs> they're like i literally have eight meetings scheduled on thursday already i'm like yeah that sounds like it sucks <laughs> <laughs> so uh the point that i was trying to get to which i forgot then oh, before i got to the point was that everybody okay. asks me if i have a podcast uh oh, no. so like now and i i kind of do feel like uh you need like a little runner across the bottom that says check out my podcast yeah i i will like i kind of feel like <laughs> the podcast at this point is justifying the microphone because uh <laughs> if we didn't have it like i mean i i just would still have the fancy microphone uh but i wouldn't be using it for anything important and i could just use like airpods or I'm something gonna get a bull yes, I'm he thinks we're important <laughs> I'm gonna get a boom mic on Amazon, Bluetooth with like a nice boom thing. That's what I'm gonna do. I just pictured when you said boom mic, I just pictured you making one of your, one of your kids like hold the overhead, hold the boom while, while like follow, <laughs> following you around during the meeting. I guess that's not what I mean then. I like the headset thing. Yeah, is the it, headset. Is this not called a boom? Uh, it's well, it is a boom, but I don't think it's called a boom. Ooh. <laughs> Like, yeah, that sounds like, part of like a I mean, technically speaking, song. in terms of like what the apparatus is, it is a, yeah. it, it would be like in filmmaking and audio, it would be referred to. I mean, it would be a boom because that's what it is. But I don't think it's called a boom when it's coming out of your headset. Like squares yeah. are parallel parallelograms, but not all parallelograms. Yes. <laughs> so I gonna look at one of those maybe because my the current headphones I'm using are. Um, uh, I think they've reached end of life. They work really well for hearing, but when I connect for to, like the first three or four meetings of the day, I spend like five minutes every time <laughs> trying to convince my computer to use the microphone, and uh, and ultimately I end up having to plug the darn things in sixty percent of the time these days. So, like it's I can't pace in meetings when I have my headphones plugged into yeah. the computer. That's not going to work for me. My kids uh, have been starter. using. So we did. Uh, we like you. Rewind. Um. <laughs> My kids wanted head headphones for like gaming and like chatting with their friends. 
and historically like it, once upon a time they would be like just find something on amazon and get it and they would find something on amazon and they would get it and they would buy it and it would literally break in two weeks mm -hmm. um and my daughter did this a bunch of times like she went through like a shit ton of headphones for a really long time uh and uh my son like i did some research and i said hey here's like four or five things that i found on like wire cutter and then i like cross reference with things on amazon and like these are super expensive but there's a uh, you know a, a lower grade brand uh, a lower grade model from the same brand that might be okay um and so what he settled on was HyperX. Uh, and then my daughter is using a an older version. I mean, she's it's it's now like the second iteration of this particular model, but it's basically like the the headphones that he was using previously, and he upgraded, and she's using the older one. Um, and they both seem uh, to to like those, and and I think they're pretty decent quality. They're not like JBLs or anything, but they're you know they're good enough, and I think the audio quality is fairly good. Um, that is helpful. I will look at HyperX. But also, like, there's wire cutter stuff on on that you can look it up. I was just going to ask, can you just share your spreadsheet? <laughs> Do you <laughs> not have a spreadsheet? Okay. I When I uh, uh, started working at Tribe, um, there was, like, a parenting channel. And at the time, we knew we needed to replace um, our hybrid car because we were expecting our third kid. And, there, like, literally because of the way that's built with the battery pack, there were only two seats in the back. So it's going to be, like... We can go, four fifths of us can go somewhere, and the last person <laughs> has to walk. Um, <laughs> There's a rock paper scissors situation for yep. who doesn't get to go. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and none, and other kids were big enough to ride in the front seat, so it was going to be a kid, which was probably irresponsible. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm like, yeah, you know, we're looking at you know, this and this, and this strategist was like, oh, here, let me share my spreadsheet with you, and had a spreadsheet of like every current major vehicle available by manufacturers in the U.S. SUV and minivan. I mean, it was like, I'm not joking when I tell you that there were like probably 20 to 30 hours worth of work in the spreadsheet. Um, and uh, I looked at it and decided that I disagreed with 50% of the decisions this person made and <laughs> thought, this is so cool and helpful and completely useless because my values are not their values. So mm -hmm. anyway, we went in a minivan. And, uh, <laughs> uh, we had a spreadsheet it. when we got our car. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's great yeah well I, we were looking at a bunch of different evs so we were like reading um you know like the distance per charge generally mm. the like lots of just random stuff price just availability yeah. at the time like we did not use a spreadsheet uh but i did do the research um and i don't know if i even really took notes i think i just had like a whole bunch of tabs open um because that's how i work <laughs> just like it's like an adhd uh person for somebody with adhd's <laughs> nightmare just like like dozens and dozens of tabs just spread across yeah it's, yeah um <laughs> not not even organized into like a tab group or anything just like <laughs> so but i we were looking at um uh because we were looking at like uh you know, sort of like hatchback kind of things as compared yeah. to SUVs and like um, in terms of cargo space and seats and, um, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, ultimately decided and, and then like, you know, what, you know, brands and stuff and, and, and we're trying to get a sense of like maintenance costs and that sort of thing. Um, and uh yeah, so that that's how we sort of con concluded with uh, getting a, a Honda CRV. Um, I I like Hondas. I like the way that they drive. Anyway, my my mom's had Hondas, um, stepmom, uh, and I've driven them, and I've always like liked the way they handled. So I sort of have a preference. Um, yeah, but because uh, we were I... looking, at, we were because com the nearest com comparable thing is like a a, a Rav Four, a Toyota yep. Rav Four. Uh, and we were looking at those two and like if you're just like if if it's just apples and or like apples to apples i'm like well i'm gonna pick the honda because i like it better yeah yeah i in my parent my grandfather um no my great grandfather had a um like a service shop for automobiles back in the day and for whatever reason it was ford i'm not like i mean great grandfather god i mean it must have been like some of the early automobiles you know 
Mm. That's what I was going to say. I was like, my great-grandfather had a horse? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the service shop, so my grandfather worked there, but the result was like, they only bought Fords in the yeah. family. So my parents still are like, well, we yeah. got to buy Ford. And I'm like, I I don't know. There was a really right. strong only buy American car uh, sentiment in Aaron's oh, family yeah. coming down from her grandparents. Um, yeah. which I think was inherited from just various things, but also like possibly influenced by like things like the cold war and, yeah. you know, uh, you know, her, her grandfather w worked on the bomb that was dropped in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. So like, there's maybe some sense of like, let's not buy Japanese products for that reason. I don't know, perhaps, um, you said you're 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 uh, you're you got an EV and you're doing lots of research. What did you end up getting? Us? Oh, yes, we got you. a Hyundai Kona. Okay. And um, what was the what were among the decision making factors for a Hyundai versus anything else? Um, better range overall. Um, for the for the like price bracket that we mm -hmm. were in, um, the Ionic wasn't readily available. Otherwise, we probably would have gotten that, um, which is kind of like, I mean, I don't know. I think of, of it as like the next step up, but mm -hmm. also like, like brand wise or type wise, we've never had, neither of us have ever owned a car. So we're kind of coming in just being like, we're fresh, we're new, yep. what, what are we doing? Um, and we wanted something that had enough room, like it's just the two of us most of the time. So we don't really have to worry about that. And so we wanted something that like the back seats folded down and we'd have enough to like bring a cooler and camping stuff and like stuff of that nature. What um, is the range on it? Um, it's a good question. It's different in the summer versus the right. winter. Yeah. But I think in the, in like peak condition, I think you can get like 400 kilometers. I don't know what that is in miles. <laughs> Hold please. <laughs> Like 260 ish, Two, like, right? yeah, 250 miles. I, 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 if Robin listens to this and I'm wrong, he's just going to be like, oh, you're not uh, good, a good advertiser for the EV. <laughs> oh. But anyway, it's, it's plenty of, plenty of range for us because even on a road trip, we're stopping for lunch and we can charge or, yeah. Or we, we had the Chevy Volt for a while, which I loved. Um, mm -hmm. and this was, this was years ago. So, true ev options were just pretty limited um, yeah. and this so with the internal combustion engine um you know you, you could like put a tank of gas in and go but charging it you, you, it was battery first so you charge the battery mm -hmm. and we got like 35 miles of range on a charge and then it would fall back to internal combustion engine right but for like taking the kids to school in the morning and picking them up like we would go for like weeks and weeks and weeks maybe months without the engine starting mm -hmm. um and it actually had a maintenance setting where it would start the engine if it had been too long just to keep things moving. <laughs> so you'd be driving, you're like, I have plenty of battery and the engine would turn on and it would tell you in the screen that it was just doing engine maintenance. Like, you know. It's like, I just need to, to check on it to make sure we're okay. Yeah, is it still there? <laughs> I need to check, check, make sure I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we're probably gonna uh, inherit um, Aaron's parents' old Prius. It's like a, I don't know, it's one of the really, really old ones. Um, as uh, a second car mostly so that gavin has a, a vehicle to to go around places um, my parents just got rid of their really old prius only because my brother basically like drove it into the ground but it was like i don't know 15 years old like it was yeah it had seen some seen some stuff <laughs> we don't talk about my old car enough here <laughs> i have a 2006 toyota matrix oh. with 228,000 miles on it wow. and so right um, and it's like, I would love to get rid of this car and get something more sensible. But at the end of the day, it's like, if I get rid of it, it's immediately going to be waste. Mm -hmm. So like right now, it's like, I can't justify doing anything with it other than using it to get around town because it's, it gets like 30 miles per gallon. It's safe. It's obviously visible. Yeah. It has like no overhead. <laughs> <laughs> we we looked at matrixes, uh, when we were, were before we got, um, well, this is probably after after our Saturn died, before we got something new, and we were oh, trying to figure out. Oh, piece Saturn. Yeah, yeah. So we were trying to figure out what to do after Saturn, because um, mm -hmm. we really liked our Saturn. I mean, we didn't. I didn't. You know, not necessarily like the way that it looked, because it kind of looked 
like you know we had a saturn uh yeah, yeah yeah um with the big hatchback thing and and it's yeah they look goofy those car those types of cars and the only thing comparable is like a subi outback uh, which is like the car of choice in utah if you mm. are not driving a truck like it's either a truck or an outback those are the two options it's maybe so maybe if you're a little bit edgy you drive a crv but like it's pretty much those things like so every and especially if you go up to park city everybody has an outback everybody 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 There's so many outbacks um so so that's that's like the default choice so we were looking at those and we looked at the matrix for a second um because it was a hatchback until i decided until i until i realized that that the cargo would be a cargo space was a significant downgrade from the other things that we were looking at um uh so we that it get but it, it they look cute like i like i like the way that they look as compared to you know other things of that sort of i showed you that bracing strip you paint under the hood right yes yeah that's still there uh the in underneath the engine hood there's like a plastic thing that goes over the uh part of the engine uh, I'm not sure what it is, and I don't think it matters, but that's plastic, and so that's also painted blue. So it's 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 kind of a looker, too. I mean, it's not a bad old car. I need to replace the rear bumper because it's. I don't actually need to. I don't think I'm going to. I wish I could, but I can't justify it because it's it's vanity. Um, but there's like there's some flaking in paint. And there's like mm. a clear coat layer that's coming off. It looks nasty, but it's like it's fine. Like there's nothing wrong with it. So yeah. Um, when I needed to go to Florida in a hurry, <laughs> I hopped it. I hopped in that car and. One, miles one of the it. first things I did in our our new house, so our garage is a little bit offset from the driveway. Um, so like the driveway goes straight and the garage is kind of like off that way. Um, mm -hmm. So if you were to be in the garage and back out straight up, you would actually run into the concrete stairs that go up to the back door, uh, which I did um because i hadn't quite yeah, i was like I, you sound really sure of what would yeah. happen uh i hadn't quite mastered like how much to turn and like i think i was doing that alongside also like closing the garage door so i wasn't maybe looking for half a second um and so <laughs> and so yeah and like basically the entire car is made out of plastic. Mm -hmm. um, like all of the parts are plastic. So what actually happened, instead of it getting like scraped up and dinged and like, like body work that could be like hammered out or something, what actually happened was the plastic, there's a whole big ass rear plastic piece that kind of wraps around the back. Uh, and it's held in by like, I don't know, like uh, sort of like those kind of, I imagine it's like, you know, those those plastic like pieces where you've got like a slot and there's a thing that goes through the slot and it has like a sort of like thing that pops out on the other side. So like it doesn't come out when you pull on it kind of thing where like you would like push it in if you wanted to like put it, you know, like that sort of thing. I think it's got something like that. So it popped out of those things. So now I've got like a little flap uh, like I was able it did bend it. But I was able to pop out the bend, and now it just has like a section that's kind of like like a little flap sticking out of the back, and a, little, a few little yeah. scrapes. Um, and I I did take it in after afterwards to the um, to the uh, the guys I, I take the car into usually to get oil change and whatever. Uh, and just like you know, if if you can, if it's easy, if you can just like like shove it in because I tried and I couldn't. Like, but it looks like you could just like kind of manhandle it, um, yeah. person handle, I guess. Um, <laughs> Uh, and, and they tried a little bit and they said, no, uh, you probably need to actually go to like, you know, a body shop place to, to get it done. And I'm like, yeah, fuck that shit. That's not <laughs> worth it. Yeah. I'm, I don't want, I don't, I don't care enough about it. We're going to, you know, I, I don't, we're not at a point where we're going to care about resale value and we're going to probably yeah. drive it until it dies. Shortly after, um, Rhonda's mom died, she was taking Ty to cello and in her head and distracted and it's like scraped and dented one of the doors in the minivan she's like you know mortified and embarrassed and like upset about it i'm like i mean it's like a at this point it's a six-year-old car and it's totally paid for and we're gonna drive it for so we can't like yeah yeah like the... it's not worth the <laughs> it's not worth the energy to get it fixed it's not terrible it's not gonna rust it's whatever yeah, we, we've been thinking vaguely about the, the possibility that in some time in the near future, we will probably want to get a, a newer car, but it's like, this one is fine, um, yeah. and we don't have issues with it, um, and it's got, we've got like 160,000 miles on it, 
we got it at like 30,000 um, because it was, it was, it was actually a really, it was kind of a steal um, because um, it was, it was older. Um, it's a 2013 and we got it like four or five years ago or something. So it's a little bit older, but like the, they said like the, you know, the person who at, who owned it was like, you know, the little old lady who never went left town. And that's like, that's like, you know, Aaron's dad likes to like give, you know, lots and lots and lots of advice. And one of the things that he's always said about like buying a car is to find a car that was previously owned by a little old lady because they don't use it. And then they'll go and then like they'll just trade it in for something newer because it's newer and because then just drive it around town and, and that's fine. And so it had, yeah, it had like 30,000 something miles. So it was like super low mileage compared to everything else. And um, yeah, so we've, put like 130,000 miles on it in, <laughs> in like four years, five years. Uh, um, so yeah, I, I do feel like at some point it'll, it'll die, but it hasn't come near that. It's going to be a while You're just getting started. Yeah. I mean, the way they make engines these days compared to when we were first driving. Well, our, our old CRV died um, because, um, well, we think that it was a, uh, we think it was a flood victim. Uh, we think that it was because uh, we knew and looking at like the car history, it came from the East Coast. Um, it was like previously owned in New York or something. Um, and it was sold at an auction. Um, it didn't have a ton of miles. It didn't seem to have anything wrong until like later when sort of everything kind of simultaneously started falling apart. But the one kind of thing that that we did take it to a dealership to like just have the an inspection done uh, before we bought it. And the one thing that did call out was that there was rust on like, you know, things on the inside, like things inside, like the, the wheel, like the axle and stuff. And that's not the sort of thing. I mean, you wouldn't get that here because yeah. we don't have ocean and salt water. Um, so like that was a little bit weird. Um, and that was actually not that long after there were major floods on the East Coast because of various uh, like hurricanes, tropical storms, that sort of thing happening. So like there, it, it, it sort of matched. And when everything started going to shit, uh, I think we made the decision that, yeah, that probably was kind of a, not a dud, but like it probably was a flood car that got trashed that then was sold at auction. Somebody fixed it up and resold it. Um, and then, and then somehow it came into the possession of this particular, like really small kind of crappy dealership. Um, I have a friend that is a crappy small dealership in uh, <laughs> Tennessee. He would agree. Um, but I, I, in the past I've, I've bought cars from him and it's like, uh, Hey, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I want to spend. And he'll just look at auction and be like, Hey, these ones are coming up. You know, what's the, what's the max I can bid on them. And hmm. that's helpful. He, uh, it's okay. It's it's kind of a pain in the ass because he's not in the state that I'm in. So right. then you have to go do sort out the paperwork to get registered, and it's just it it is totally foreign. You go to the DMV, you're like, hey, I bought this car from out of state, and they're like, uh, sure. Like I need a like, <laughs> license plate for it. They're like, hmm. I apparently need to see a bill of sale or something. Do you have one of those? <laughs> it's just it's. A, they're just used to the dealers doing it. Like they yeah. can renew stuff, but they can't issue new tags for out of state cars. It's it's just that's the button that doesn't get pushed on the little ticket thing, right? <laughs> mm. Driver's license renewal, license plate renewal, like new vehicle? Like no. Like they're not they don't know what to do with that. The button doesn't press. <laughs> I had it happen twice. Like one time I got I bought this truck, it was a pickup truck from him, and uh I mean it took me months to get it sorted out. I just drove with like a like a I drove with an out of state plate uh from Tennessee. But it showed like it was a dealer plate for for months, and then sent that back to him, and then and then the uh, the EV, or the hybrid car, it was um, uh, I got like a paper tag from him that I put in the back window. It was like a Tennessee temporary tag, and <laughs> drove till that was expired for months, and finally got it sorted out the state of Florida. So that part sucks. Mm. I wonder if it'd be easier in North Carolina. It seems like people are always registering and unregistering weird stuff here. <laughs> We have a, um, I don't know if this is true for other states, but there's a particular type of vehicle registration you can get if your car is older than a certain number of years. It might be like a 50 year threshold or something. So then you get like this special plate that has like this 
this like vintage first gen like Ford Model T kind of like icon on it, like in the special plate thing. Um, and uh, but like the things that qualify as an antique are like now like vanigans and like <laughs> you know like like it's yeah. like it's like from the seventies, but they're antique because I think it's just like over the fifty year threshold or something. Ty would love to buy a classic car. The 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 fun thing with that is I think that if you have one of these and, and the reason why people do it is if you have one of these vintage cars, um, you don't need to comply with like air quality regulations, I think. Like the I think emissions. It, yeah. I think I think you just I think you just say fuck it. Um, which is, you know, not great. Uh <laughs> But I think that that's I think that that's a thing, and that's why that's why that's why people get the plate is so they don't need to deal with emissions. Yeah. So Gary wanted to talk about jokes. Jokes. Yeah. This is Gary's joke segment. Um, we have this thing where I work. It's called Slack. Um, no, and so somewhere along the way, there's the cultural thing that people have started setting a joke as their Slack mm, uh, right. profile, which I think I've shared before. Mm. And then we set up like. A, uh, a channel in Slack that, because what was happening is everyone was sending messages to everyone else like, hey, your joke's funny, haha. So instead mm -hmm. of sending individual messages to three or four people, we set up one channel where everyone can appreciate each other's joke. <laughs> okay. And then I uh, was down uh, in Florida and I was like, I am going to write a Slack bot for this. And so I... <laughs> wait, wait, wait a Slack bot for saying that's a nice joke? No. Oh. It captures <laughs> that's what I thought joke. too. And so there is a, a small page that just lists all the jokes that have been sold. And I'll drop a link in the, so we can use that in the show notes. Um, and in addition, it has Slack commands so you can see stats on how many people have shared jokes. There is a shamer that uses um, text Levenstein distance to figure out how similar a joke is to another joke. And it can oh. say, hey, that joke's already been sold, uh, told on such and such a date. Um, <laughs> or No, wait, sorry. That joke has already been told by such and such. Maybe you forgot because it was X days ago and then the eye rolling. Emotions. Wow. Oh, yeah. So there's a shaming component. And uh, where I'm going with this, though, is I added a slash command um, that uh, you type slash LRP, one rock point, uh, joke, and it will tell a joke from a joke API that exists out in the wild. So we were finishing a meeting today and someone said, maybe we can close with a joke. So I was like, oh, this is great. Great use for the slash command. So I typed slash LRP joke and it was... Um, <laughs> Let me go look at the joke. Hold on. I forgot what the joke was. It's I did the joke itself is as actually important, but uh, the okay. joke is I was like, was it the most horrible joke in the world? No, no. I'm are are, no, are these there... are all very vanilla jokes, which is okay, good. I was gonna ask, are there or are you thinking of because I know that there's other joke APIs that will specifically give you like dirty jokes or joke of a certain type or whatever, like they're in categories. And I, I, is that a thing that is I on picked... the feature roadmap of this Slack bot? <laughs> I picked an API that is um, like clean dad jokes, like groaners. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, Cause that's, that's the way we've been going. And... Like puns. Yeah. Fun. Yes. Yeah. So it said, what's a pain. So I asked what's a penguin's favorite relative. And then I accidentally hit the mute button and I answered but no one heard me. So they thought I was just putting like a really dramatic pause in. <laughs> and after like, I was like, wait, and no one like laughed. I'm like, oh, okay. So I really, was waiting Really too. rough crowd. So it was just like total silence because I didn't realize I muted before I get the punchline. Um, so finally someone was like, are you, are you gonna tell the punchline? And then I realized I was on mute. And it was like this 15 <laughs> seconds of just total silence. Everyone was awkward about it. And I unmuted, I said, Antarctica. <laughs> And, and at that point, like, it wasn't funny anymore because it had been so long. <laughs> like, no. and, 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 like, people, like, didn't even say goodbye. So people just, like, left. <laughs> <laughs> like, the dramatic buildup was way too much. Yeah. Uh, uh, the people in the, in the joke channel were, like, that was great. And it was very useful that you could just pull a joke out of thin air like that. The only joke that that chat gpt knows i mean it, it knows some others but this is the one that it tells most consistently is um why do scientists hate atoms or why do why do scientists not trust atoms i don't know because they make up everything oh. that's, that's kind of dumb yes yes <laughs> and it's it's especially like especially disappointing when you're like 
like you have the whole wealth of humor yeah, available. Like, <laughs> like you're you're asking the artificial intelligence to to supplant your own personal brain space knowledge with a joke that has been fetched, that has been like somehow escalated to the top of the tier as as the the best or best to recommend joke, and that's the thing you come that's up it. with. Hmm. We we had a moment one day where everybody decided to sell tell a horse joke. Which was really funny because like nice. half the team had like a horse emoji as their status, which was just it was adorable. There's a um in at the airport that's closest to us, there's this like, I don't know, feed and tack place kind of across the way. Mm. And they have this giant life-size horse statue and they dress it up based on like the season and or holiday. <laughs> So if it's rainy, it'll have like a, a yellow raincoat and an umbrella, <laughs> or it's just like, or it dresses up as like a bunny for Easter or like whatever the thing is. So but we constantly drive by and try to guess like what the holiday is or like, <laughs> like for flag we're... day, it's like carrying a flag or something. Arbor day, it's got like a shovel. <laughs> Queen Victoria day, or there's like a crown. Right. Like, I just. <laughs> That's awesome. There's a lot. Back to school, it's like a whole like school supplies theme. I don't know. There's a lot. And then they, they also like reel it into the house or the stable or whatever it is and bring it back out every day, I guess for vandalism reasons. But like, I think its name is Cantaloupe or something like that. I don't know. It has a whole Facebook page. <laughs> uh, that was not our tack and feed uh, places uh, do not have quaint uh and fun anything really <laughs> in utah we've created we've created a whole backstory that there's like one woman who's like really into like this is her whole job basically because it's so boring and it's like you know like maggie is just like <laughs> on it every day like she's just prepared she's got a whole closet full of outfits for the horse and, like, probably spends hours has, like, hour looking for herself, like self like figuring out what the next yeah, her, yeah is. her calendar spends small. hours researching like what each what day is. is and like what would be a good representation like where you could find costumes for a horse that's the other thing is that it's a it's, it's big and so it's i'm just horse. like this is you have to like intentionally make these things they're not something you just find horse costumes i don't think. i mean maybe horse costumes.com exists and maybe they're, they're just I'm not, since it's like I'm a feed and that. tack place i'm like well if anybody would have access to that sort of thing i guess it would be them but i, I don't know I went to one of those shops um, when I was uh, speaking at WordCamp, uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, I had meant to fly with a cowboy hat because my top my talk was cowboy coding best practices. <laughs> and I arrived and it was like, uh, I need a cowboy hat. And Jeremy Ward was like, I know just the place. So we went into a tax shop like that in, uh, like, I guess it was St. Paul. I'm not sure if it was Minneapolis or St. Paul. Um, who walked in and the guy's like, how can I help you? <laughs> and I'm like, he, he wasn't like, you look like you need a cowboy hat. <laughs> I was like, I need a cowboy hat. And like, and an expensive one. He's like, well, these ones are on clearance. What size is your head? I'm like, I have, I have no, no idea. idea. <laughs> He's like, let's find out. And so we did. And I left with a hat that served the purpose. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Update horsecostumes.com does not exist. Uh, it is currently for sale for over nine thousand dollars. Ooh, I don't like wow, that. If you would like to purchase horsecostumes.com for your very personal horse costume e commerce shop, I feel like I could just do the dot net in this case. <laughs> uh, or dash horse, horse dash costumes costumes.net. Uh, that one just doesn't exist. So maybe so that one's probably one. free. Yeah, you could you could stop. do that one. Why would I? What would I do with that? I don't know. I would ask uh, some AI to make me images of horses in costume. Oh, so okay. Let's see. I'm looking up what the latest costume was. The horse dressed up in honor of the coronation. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> did you all uh watch any of that no no i didn't either i actually I, 
I mean, <laughs> Allison is the mo- one out of the three of us that has the most reason to because Canada is technically still. I mean, not. <laughs> He's going to be on our $20 bill. Oh, for fuck's on. sake. Boo. I'm very anti monarchy. If you yeah, haven't yeah. already picked up on that. Um, I just think it's ridiculous. And I don't know how people in England need to feel about it, but as a a colony, I'm kind of like, this is our chance to like break off. Mm. You know, like Queen's on all the money. It's let's rebrand, let's let's do let's do this. Let's this is our chance to kind of but he doesn't need to be on our money. I think that's ridiculous. It feels it feels I mean I say this as an American, uh, it who who has currency that has presidents on the face of them, but they're not current presidents, and I feel like that's a little bit less egotistical. <laughs> like also, I'm like, what has he done for us? You could make arguments that the queen did things, right? Maybe, maybe, sort of. yeah, but like. I just don't, and there's so, I just feel also in the scheme of things, I feel like there are so many other historical figures that it would be pretty amazing to highlight mm-hmm. by putting yeah. on the money. I just don't feel like, um, it's not like we've run out of people. <laughs> yeah, right. It's not like the pool is just prime ministers yeah, and just monarchs. Like, like, that's it. It's always, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I just feel like we, this is our chance and we're squandering it. I mean, but. yes, but you know we have slave owners on our currency so it would be hard not to mm-hmm. have slave it's owners like... on your currency well i mean it's not like we change it often we like you put a person on there it stays there forever yeah so, I mean, they're it, already it... dead so it's not like you remove them when they're done. <laughs> they're gone I would like to propose that to people. Why, why can't we put living people on our currency? I'm going to start asking people that. That's well, going to be one of my like, thing. Like, party Charles questions. Charles is still around now. Yeah, like, but who would you put on it? Like Elon right Musk? Yeah, like... No. Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jordan. That'd be good. I, I, w- I would support a Michael Jordan like $5 bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Who who did the um, the Poet Laureate? Um, oh. What's her name? I would put yeah. her on a bill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't believe I can't remember. I mean, that. like, there's also an argument, like, you could do different people on the same. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.